I'm basically going to give you the overview of what parts are necessary and how to set those up on your bike to give you a good single speed configuration. As you've already seen on my frame here, I've removed the drivetrain, I've removed the crank arms, rear derailleur, front derailleur, all the shifters, etc. So we're going to go through what each part is, what part I think you'll need to upgrade or replace I should say and how to do that. So here are the parts that you're going to need to get your single speed configuration set up uh, converting your geared bike to single speed. Uh, this is going to assume that you have a vertical dropout frame that is not single speed specific but if you have a single speed specific frame they're more or less the same with the exception of your chain tensioner. So what we have here is you're going to be replacing your cassette with sets of spacers and a new cog and then I have a lock ring that you can just use from your old cassette. On your cog you have different choices you can decide whether you know what gear ratio you want to run and the rear cog is the easiest one to change. I sometimes will run a 16 tooth, we have an 18 tooth and a, a 20 tooth. It just depends on what kind of terrain or how strong I am during the season, uh, depending on which cog I run. These cogs here are cheap. They're three or four dollars at your local bike shop. I just use the the cheap steel ones, but you can buy, you know, nice aluminum ones or high end aluminum or high end steel ones. Uh, just a, a preference. But the cheap ones work fine for me. Moving on to your front chain ring, I use a 33 tooth and these are single speed specific. Uh, what makes them single, sp single speed specific is that you can see there are no ramps or pins. Uh, it's you know just a smooth ring all around. If you look at a front middle ring from a you know geared bike, you can see all the ramps and pins on it. Running single speed you do not want these because all it's going to do is try to throw your chain off. So in order to do just the middle ring without running a bash guard, because this is another option, is you can do a bash guard in combination with just your middle ring up front. Um, but the, the difference is, and, and the reason why I do this, I use these short chain ring bolts. They're shorter because then I can run just the middle ring without having the bash guard or big ring on there that's traditionally on there. So you can buy these short chain ring bolts at pretty much any bike shop as well. And they're also fairly cheap. And then what we have here is your chain tensioner because you're going to be converting your geared bike to single speed. You probably don't have horizontal dropouts or an, eccentric, or an eccentric bottom bracket. So we use a chain tensioner uh, to give you proper chain tension so your chain won't fall off as it's bouncing around. So as you can see, I've installed my single speed specific chain ring using these short chain ring bolts because I've removed the big ring. I don't like to run a bash guard uh, simply because I like the style of just having the middle ring by itself. But if you want to use your old long chain ring bolts, you could just put a bash guard in place of the big ring. On your rear hub, you typically have the whole cassette you know, that fills up the space in here. But since we're going to be only putting one cog on, we need to use these spacer kits. You can buy these spacer kits at most bike shops or pretty much you know, any online bike store. So what you do is we're just going to kind of temporarily set it up here so we can get it lined up and I'll show you what the next step on how to do that. But we're going to put the cog with some spacers on the inside and then our outside spacers on. And then use the lock ring from your cassette that you took off, at least on this kit. Um, you know, they expect you to use your lock ring from beforehand. So I'm just going to hand tighten this now and get it on here and kind of show you uh, what we're going to do because in order to know how many spacers to put on the inside versus the outside is where chain alignment comes in and we'll show you that next. So what we're going to do here is just getting the chain on 
and we don't have a chain tensioner on right now and so uh, you're not going to have proper chain tension you can see how it sags right here so what you want to do is you want to get your chain sized to as close as you can you know to to not having or having as little sag as you as you possibly can because you know all frame sizes are different and your chain stays are different length you know you're just going to have to just go as close as you can this first time so as you can see I, I have my chain cut as far as I can go with this but we still have sag and we'll take care of that sag a little bit later on here with the chain tensioner earlier when we put our cog on with the spacers I only hand tighten it because you sometimes have to move spacers from the inside or the outside, you know, back and forth to get proper chain alignment. And you can see you want the chain perfectly aligned from your rear cog straight to the front ring. If you have too many spacers on one side, your chain is going to be slightly crooked and it you run the higher risk of it falling off or having other problems with it. So you want proper chain alignment to make sure it's nice and straight. Adjust the spacers as necessary and then tighten your lock ring. All I've done is roughly set the bolt in here. It's loose right now so I can show you how to set up the chain tensioner on a system like this. If you had a spring-loaded chain tensioner, you're probably done at this point because the chain tensioner would already be putting tension on the chain. On this system, it doesn't, so it's a little bit different setup that I want to show you here. So all you do is basically put pressure on the chain until you can see it going tight. And what I like to do is have roughly a quarter inch you know, of up and down slack in the chain. If the chain is too tight, you know, puts too much stress on the drivetrain and it's harder to pedal, etc. If it's too loose, you run the higher risk of the chain falling off while you're riding. So it's kind of important to get that proper chain tension here. So all I'm going to do is set it so I get roughly my quarter inch of up and down. And as you can see, the chain is looking even kind of straight here. And then once it's set, I tighten it down. So at this and there you have it, your single speed setup. Nice, clean looking handlebars with no derailers, a lot fewer cables to have to adjust, and you get a nice, clean drivetrain, simple to maintain. And did I say it was a challenge to ride? Because it is, but for some of us, that's what makes it a lot of fun. Enjoy it, give it a try, and hopefully it works out well for you.